Hello Internet, my name is Rowan and this is Astro with Roro. Today we're going to be talking all things battery and power and how you can make the best power setup for your situation. This video is split into three separate sections, so please check down in the video description below for links to each of those sections so that you can watch the part of the video that best suits your needs. The first part of this video is my ultra portable setup. It is designed for people who have a Star Trucker and a DSLR and want something really lightweight that they can put in a backpack and even go hiking with. The second part of this setup is for those that have a bit more of a substantial setup. They might have a mount similar to this one here, a dedicated astro camera, and one or two accessories that need powering. The third and final setup is what I think is truly the ultimate power setup. It is designed to allow you to image when you're out and abroad using a battery, but also when you might be at home and have access to AC wall socket power. If you like this video, please do subscribe. And if you are looking to automate your hardware even more, please do hang around because in my next video, we will be diving into the nighttime imaging and astronomy software nicknamed Nina and their new sequencer options. This allows us to automate a huge part of our workflow as well as setting awesome conditions like take a photo of this only when it gets to a certain height in the sky, which is great as you can see I have a limited sky view. So let's jump on with the first setup. This first setup as I said is dedicated to those of you that have a star tracker and a DSLR. In this video I will be using the Skywatcher Star Adventurer and a Nikon 7200 with a 14 to 24 millimeter lens. A setup like this is great for those of you who might already be into photography and are wanting to start doing some deeper space photography. The Star Tracker allows you to take longer exposure and multiple exposures of the sky and stack them together to get a lot more nebulosity. It is also extremely lightweight, so you can go traveling with this very easily and even throw it into a backpack and go hiking or camping with it. Now I wanted to make sure that for this section we only had to worry about one battery. Now that's great for a few reasons. Firstly, you only have to worry about charging one battery. You don't have to worry about charging multiple batteries or if you've left or if you've forgotten to charge the extra batteries that you need for this setup. Secondly, it keeps things really lightweight. And the battery that I recommend is this. This is the Talent Cell 8300. It is an 8300 milliampere hour battery that has a couple of great outputs on top. Firstly, it has a USB output. This is just so multi-purpose. You can use it for your phone if your phone gets slow, but also many star trackers like this one here have a USB input. In this case, this is a micro USB input. So if you purchase a cable like this, you are able to attach the micro USB input to your star tracker and the USB input to your battery. This means that you can use a large external battery like this to power your Star Tracker all night and really never have to worry about running out of battery. Now, the one thing I would say is please don't get a cable this short. Make sure your cable is about a meter long because once you've connected this cable, you'll find that it's going to put a lot of tension just hanging there and this is going to be sitting on top of a tripod. So you really want a one meter long cable so that this battery can be sitting on the ground while this Star Tracker sits on top of your tripod. The next part of this is powering your DSLR or mirrorless camera. Now DSLRs and mirrorless cameras come with decent batteries. Mirrorless cameras happen to go through batteries faster than DSLRs because they're usually illuminating more of a LCD screen. But I find when I'm using longer exposures, that sensor is reading more data and that means I chew through more of my batteries. And a small battery like this will last me for a couple of hours, but if I'm hiking out to a dark site, I really wanna make sure I'm getting the most out of the dark sky. And that way I can image all night. So for me, I recommend going and buying one of these. This is a dummy battery and this one's designed to work with Nikon cameras because I have a Nikon camera, but you can get a version for this for Sony, Canon, Fuji, Pentax, whatever type of camera you have. The most important part though is the other end. You need to get one with a DC 2.1 millimeter plug. This plug will allow you to connect your DSLR camera straight to the talent cell battery. And as you can see with this battery, you can have a USB and your DC 2.1 millimeter plug outputting at the same time. When you turn this on, if this is plugged into your star tracker, you are then able to power both your star tracking mount and your DSLR camera all night long. And because this battery here is four times the capacity of the standard battery of your DSLR, you really won't have any issues imaging all night with a setup like this. So that concludes our ultra portable setup. So what if you have something more like this? or you start with a setup like this and you wanna move over, will these batteries be wasted? Well, no, my next setup is a multi-battery setup. 
And this is designed for people that have a large amount, say something like this. Maybe you have a dedicated astro camera that requires cooling. And perhaps you have an accessory or two, like a dew heater or a flat panel that you want to power during the night to take your flat frames. If you are not taking flat frames, please stop this video right now and go and watch my flat video on flat frames. It is really important that you take flat frames because you're doing such a disservice to your images if you aren't using flat frames in your workflow. So the multi-battery setup is very similar to the first setup that we have. The only difference being that you need a battery for each of the accessories that you are looking to power. So in this case, I'm gonna be powering a mount with one battery and a camera with a second battery. I have actually got three of these talent cell batteries because I like them so much and I usually use the third one for either a dew heater or a flat panel. Similar to our ultra portable setup, this is a very easy setup to get working. I actually have my cables pre-tied here. This keeps things nice and out of the way and easy to manage. And on this side here, we have all of the plugs that go into the camera. So I've got my power, my USB and a dew heater. And on this side, I have all of my gear that plugs in to power. So I have my DC 2.1 millimeter plug, which just plugs in here. I then have a USB, which would go into my computer. And I have a Jew heater here, which could go into a Jew controller. So with a setup like this, I would be able to power my camera for the whole night. Nice and easy. Similarly for my mount. Here are my cables for my EQ6R Pro. Here I've got a data cable with a USB on the end that allows my computer to control my mount. If you are looking to control a mount like the EQ6R Pro with your computer, do go and check out my video on the EQ6R Pro. I go into depth as to how to set this up. I also then have here a power cable. This is a Lynx Astro power cable for the EQ6R Pro. It has the EQ6R Pro power adapter here, so this plugs into the mount. And on this end again, I have that DC 2.1 millimeter plug. I simply connect this to my battery, connect my laptop via USB, connect this side to the mount, and there my mount also has power for the entire night. One of these batteries is easily enough to power the mount for most of the night, especially if you are tracking more than you are slewing. So this is a great way to set up multiple accessories and it can grow as you grow and as you purchase more accessories. However, there are two caveats with this. Firstly, there is the fact that you need to keep track of charging multiple batteries. If you're planning to go out for a night, then you're gonna need to make sure that many hours before you have all of your batteries charged. And that can be a bit of a problem. Sometimes I would forget to charge one battery and then there is nothing you can do when you're out in your field if only two of your three batteries have power. The second issue I found with this setup is that after about three accessories being attached to batteries, you have a large number of cables that go from the head of the mount, which is moving, down to the stationary ground. This can mean that sometimes your cables can get caught or snagged as the head of your mount rotates around during the night. Now, cable snags can be really bad for two reasons. Firstly, they can disrupt the tracking of your mount. If your mount is suddenly finding it harder to move around because a cable is stuck, then you will find your tracking goes out the window. Secondly, it can also damage the cable or even the mount or the accessory attached to the cable because you get that tugging on the cable and it could bend the plug. So I recommend this if you have three or less things that need to be attached to power. So what happens if you have more than three accessories that need power? Well, then I recommend my ultimate power setup. This is a setup that I personally have been using for the best part of a year now, and I really wish I had jumped straight to this solution. This solution requires two things though. Firstly, it requires a battery that can power all of your gear for the entire time that you want to be out. So this really depends on how long you want to be out. If you only want to be out for three to six hours, then of course you need a smaller battery. I like to be able to power my gear all night because I often go out camping at dark sites, and I want to make sure that I can make the most of the dark skies out there. Secondly, it requires a power distribution unit. Now this is an added expense and not something that everyone will want, but I really do recommend if you have more than three accessories to buy a power distribution box. It will mean that your life becomes so much easier, your cable management is much cleaner, and you can easily add more accessories as you get them. So let's talk batteries. Now the most important thing about your battery is its capacity. And if you look down in the description below, you will find a spreadsheet that I've put together that lists all of the gear that I need power for. It also has the power requirements for that gear. And if you replace that gear with gear that you own and the power requirements that you need, 
then you can see how long that gear will last for different battery sizes. After all that calculation, I worked out that I needed around a 500 watt hour battery. So I went with this. This is the Jackery 500 watt hour. And it is a little beast of a battery. It certainly is a bit heavier than the other batteries that we've been talking about in this video, but this battery really does have everything that I need. Over on the left here, it has an Australian AC plug. I use this to charge my laptop if my laptop battery is running low. It then has a couple of USB plugs here, which are great for charging my phone. And finally, it has this 12 volt 10 amp cigarette lighter charger here. This is the main output that I use to power all of my gear. It has a little charging input up the top here, and it's got this nice little display that shows you the remaining battery percentage, as well as the amount of power that you're currently drawing from the battery. Now, there are a lot of similar offerings to this put out by other brands, and you can get sizes like this ranging from 100 watt hours up to 1000 watt hours. So there is definitely a battery out there that will work for you. The most important thing though, is to have this cigarette lighter, as that will be going into part two, that is power distribution. So you've got your battery, you've got all your gear, how do you connect it? Well, for me, that comes down to this. This is the Pegasus Astro Powerbox Advance, and it is a wicked little power distribution unit. It takes a single 12 volt, 2.1 millimeter DC input and gives you four 12 volt outputs, two dew heaters, and an adjustable DC output as well. It also has a bit of a USB hub on it, which is really neat. So let's go through connecting all of my gear here to this battery so that you can see how it works. And then at the end, I'm gonna show you the real kicker of this setup. So firstly, how do I connect this power box to my mount and keep all my cables connected? Well, you may notice on the back, I have two strips here of 3M Velcro. On the mount, I then have the corresponding two strips here. I simply line up these strips together, apply a bit of pressure, and you'll find that it sticks and it stays there easily all night no matter what the pressure is. I can then plug all my gear into this and you'll notice that I actually put it onto the top rotating part of the mount. This means that as the night progresses and my mount moves around, all of my power cables stay in the same location because I can have them really nice and short up here and they don't, and they don't get tangled or snagged as everything moves around. There's only one cable that has to go from this power box down to the battery on the floor and that keeps things really clean. So to start off, let's connect the mount. And here I have my mount cables. As you can see, I have them wrapped here. I just got this again from a local hobby store. Um, it was really cheap and it just keeps everything nice together. You can make it to the size that you want. And if you find that your cables are really long, like this cable here is actually two and a half meters long and I don't need it that long. I've just wrapped it back and forth a few times inside the cover here. So I've got my data cable, which allows my laptop to control my mount. And I've got this. This is the Lynx Astro power cable for the EQ6R Pro. You can find it on various online retailers for Astro gear. And this point connects to the EQ6R Pro head. And this one here has a DC 2.1 millimeter so we simply connect that to one of the 12 volt outputs here, get the USB plug, connect that on. And then once I connect this to my mount, my mount would be connected receiving power. Similarly here, I have my camera cables. As you can see, I have a dew heater, which slides over either my camera or the telescope. I have the USB and I have the power adapter here. And on the other end, I have the corresponding cables. So once again, I simply plug the power in for the camera to cool, the dew heater in, and the USB in. And that's the majority of the cabling that I need to do. And I can leave this all set up together, pull it off, put it on, plug the other ends in, and I'm done. I did mention earlier that I have an electroluminescent flat panel, and I can plug that into this adjustable 12 volt here, and then adjust it from about three volts up to 12 volts, which changes the brightness that I need on that flat panel so I can better expose for my flats. And if you're not taking flats, stop this video right now, go look down at my other video where I talk about flat panels and so you can make your images look way better than without flat panels. So we now have all of this equipment attached and you then need to attach your power box to your battery. And that's where this cable comes in. This is supplied with the Pegasus Astro Power Box Advance. It's a cigarette lighter, a 2.1 millimeter DC plug. Now by default, this comes with an eight amp fuse in it and I found that wasn't quite enough for me, so I upgraded it to a 10 amp fuse, which gives me a bit more headroom for all the power that I'm gonna be drawing. 
So you simply plug the cigarette lighter in, plug the other end into the power box. Turn on the DC port here, you may notice the screen comes on, it starts telling me that it's going to start drawing some power, and we can see a blue LED coming on showing that the power box has indeed received that power. This would mean that all the accessories that I've just connected are now ready to go and be used. It also even has an automatic Jew controller in there, so it works out the relative humidity and how much power the Jew, the Jew heaters need. That's what this thing on the top is. This is a temperature and humidity sensor. So this is the setup that I use when I'm not at home and it works really well. However, when I am at home, I don't necessarily want to be using this big battery. I quite often leave this on to charge so that I can make sure it's ready to go when I next go out. So when I'm at home, what I then use is this. This is an AC to DC converter. It takes the mains line that I have plugged in here and converts it into 12 volts at 10 amps. Now this also has a standard 2.1 millimeter DC jack on the end, so I simply plug that one in and now I am powered using the exact same cables and setups that I would use out in the field when I'm at home. And that truly is the beauty of this setup. This ultimate setup allows you to use the exact same cables and management styles that you would use at home when you're out and abroad. Now if you need more than the power that this Powerbox Advance can provide. Pegasus Astro does have some larger versions of this little box so that you can get power to all of the accessories that you need. That's it for this video today. I hope you have enjoyed it and learnt something. My name is Rowan, this is Astro with Roro, and I'll see you in the next video.